New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the Morning, Lars Styles, Rosenberg, Smoke Dizza on right. the yeah. program. New Cush project God, out. Bitch. Yes, called, yes. Uh, what's it called? It's got a gun with a Statue of Liberty and it's you and another person who talks about a lot of guns named Benny, Benny the, the Butcher. Butcher. Statue of Limitations. Statue of Limitations, where yeah. you guys Ooh. talk about violence, drugs, and rap and guns. We're just talking about, our, you know, the culture, what's going on outside. Yeah, by the way, and by the way, outside is a lot of drugs and guns. And also rap at the and same time. It's a lot of rap. It's a lot of rap and a lot of um, street endeavors. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, you are a um, native Harlemite, yes? Yes. Um, would you say that, well, definitely in Harlem, things have changed a lot. It's not as violent, but um, since when you were young, but... Um, how is how is the the streets different? I mean, it's different from cold, like cold wise, like you know, what a lot of the younger guys are going by, and what a lot of the guys that I grew up like looking at went by. The, the, it's way, it's just more. Really I don't even know what what code are they going. What I, I mean, even, it is no code. So the code is by. no code. The code is no code, and you know, me growing up watching other guys, it was more of a protocol. So now it's just, you know, wild you had cowboy like, shit. Yeah, it was like you couldn't do you certain will, things. You had... Like you couldn't go to certain blocks and just open up there. You couldn't talk to uh, older guys a certain kind of way. You know what I mean? It was a respect level there. Now it's just kind of out of there. Now is that because the older guys have moved out of the neighborhoods a lot of times? They've left the neighborhoods and the fathers ain't there and the people are in jail and... There is nobody holding these young dudes accountable? It's that, and it's just, you know, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> I mean, like, I can't really speak for for the younger guys, but I do know, you know, a lot of it is just not wanting to listen to authority. It's kind of like, you know, creating the steps as they go. And then some of them, you know, some of them do fall in line, but then it's a lot of them that don't, so. And Life. um, are you viewing this... um? Most recent high profile federal case. I'm sure you've seen it on social media. I've with caught the, a glimpse the, of it. The snitching that's taking place and the implications and the yeah, it's a lot. It's a movie. I mean, I, I ain't really like um keep tabs on the whole situation because I don't really I'm kinda indifferent. But I'm paying attention to what's going on. I mean, it's everybody kinda knew that was gonna happen. But it's you know, it's bigger than just him. That just that happens. It's a him in everywhere. So it's not really like far fetched or mm. not like whoa! I can't believe he did. That. You weren't shocked. No, I wasn't shocked. Not at all. Um, I are you? I've I've been on the air several times. Uh, highly embarrassed at that this took place in New York City. Yeah, it's, it's embarrassing. embarrassing. It's super embarrassing for um for everything that you know we do out here. It's kind of like. That shit's still happening. But it's embarrassing more so that, you know, he's somebody that's kind of in the realm. See, I, I, I was more on. embarrassed by the amount of of unfiltered support hmm. that he got as an artist from the beginning just because of his YouTube yeah, views you, and his antics with that. on Instagram. Yeah. So I was I was embarrassed from then. And then to have it play out this way, it's even more embarrassing. Cause then it's like, well, this is what y'all y'all thought this, this was y'all champion. But I mean, the kids liked it. Like you know, even my hey kids. man, fuck the kids, my man. Kid, even my kids. Was but that's listening the problem, that man. All of this fucking that, dude, going back to what you just said a second ago. Ain't no respect. Hey man, go sit down and shut up. You don't know the fuck you talking about. You playing with some shit that's gonna get your ass in jail. I'm the kid, yo, you know how long I've been hearing the kids like it, the kids, the kids, yo, it's fuck true. the kids, man. I mean, I feel you, but you know, could could they really say that to us when we was kids and we liked the things that you know the older guys didn't really fuck with like that? Yeah, they did actually. I re I remember clearly. Yeah, I but, mean, my mom and you kept going, and, you kept and I kept doing my shit, but you would you only have. do it amongst your friends because you would get slapped up if you was doing it in the wrong spot. Absolutely. So it was you and your friends, and then when your your time came and the cats had moved on, now you the man. You get to move into the, the prime time slot, right. but you wasn't just acting it like you pointed out earlier. You wasn't just pulling up with your shenanigans to any old place. Yeah, you can't do that. It's a protocol. It's a protocol. But I mean, um. That situation is is unfortunate 
for the people, you know, that did get jammed up in it. And even for him, like, I can't say he didn't know what he was getting himself into. Because the whole you know, situation grown, reeks of thirst at every level. Even the cats that was okay supporting the bullshit, it reeks of thirst. Because the only reason you were supporting that rainbow hair bullshit <laughs> was because you wanted to stand next to some shit that was getting some likes on the fucking gram and getting YouTube views. But it's a lot of rainbow hair bullshit out here, though, bro. He's not the only one. Nah, some Might cats, only one some cats bull, ain't perpetuating you know. their rainbow hair, but they not perpetuating shit that's going to put you in fucking prison. I think it was because he Look, was Look, Lil troll. Yachty had Kool-Aid hair, and we talked about his little Kool-Aid hair, but he's a nice kid. I Kudu? fuck with Yachty. Oh, Yachty. Yachty. Yachty is dope. And we gave, him the, yeah. we gave him the the shenanigans when he came through with the Kool-Aid <laughs> hair. Everybody made fun of Yachty, but he stood in there, kept making his record, doing his thing, and fucking, you know what I'm saying, still stands in there and well, trolls Yachty's, right back. Yachty's talented. So, it's a different conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like Yachty's a really talented, smart kid. He may not be your favorite rapper, or your, but like he has a unique sound. He gets it. He's creative. He's Yachty's he's different. And he's good energy, and he's amazing energy. Anyway, but my but, point is to you saying there's a lot of rainbow hair, whatever, whatever. You're saying yes, there like, is a lot of rainbow, but it's not something that's per perpetuating a lifestyle. All of it that is going to get you jammed up. It, you know this type of situation. Yo, right. uh, can we talk about this project though? Course. Because the Benny project is f fire. Thank How you. long was it in the this in the works for? Um, I want to say like six months. Because over that <clears throat> six months, Benny's brand has gotten bigger and bigger. You must have been Birdman rubbing the hands as that whole thing's going. <laughs> you already know. You already know that you have this project yeah, done. I was, and, I was and he's ready. just getting bubbling more and more and more. But I mean, I kind of watched that happen from like 2017. Just him, you know. Taking the steps and going. And I've been like close to the whole Griselda movie. Yeah, yeah, since the very the beginning. beginning. Yep. So, you know, those are my guys. So it wasn't foreign for me to work with him. And then when the opportunity came for us to do something and we was, you know, thinking about producers, and I'm like, you let's just keep it in house. Fuck with Pete because I already got business. And so it's with all Pete. Pete Rock beats. It's all Pete Rock. And the beats are fucking crazy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Pete went hard. Were you happy with the uh I know it just dropped last week, but were you happy with the initial reception? Absolutely. It was overwhelming. I mean, it's the EP. It charted. You know what I mean? Like, um, streams is up. Would, are Everybody you talking about it? Are you, um, I would imagine you are one of the artists who is truly benefiting from the game being the way it is right now. I love it. This is it. This I love is, it. I if this had been the major it. label era and you were an indie artist trying <clears> to <throat> hawk vinyl at Fat Beats, which is basically what you probably would have been doing, and I say it with all due respect, mm -hmm. Instead, you get to put out project after project and have the streams just add up, add, add up, up, right? And sell the vinyl. We sold and out. Still of sell the vinyl. We sold out of vinyl for the project even came. How out. much money really gets made on vinyl? Can we talk? A lot. Like People love to collect tens it. of thousands. Like let's say, if it's twelve dollars to make a vinyl, you sell it for thirty. If you make five hundred, it's about ten thousand dollars. So, I mean, it's probably going to cost you maybe, like, a little under 5000 to make it. So it's a good so double up. It's a good double up. And it turns around yeah. quick. Yeah, it's a quick turnaround. And it's a novelty piece at the end of the day. Like, somebody might buy the vinyl and not even own anything to even play the vinyl. But just to have it, get it signed, come now to a does, show. Is it, I don't know, you guys, you collect in this space, too. Does it, you get that one double up on the vinyl, right? Does it now lose, uh, I guess, the the urgency if you put out another batch after that, right? Like, you got to you gotta kind of live off that double up because you Most can't go. Most people don't really do a second batch, do they? Yeah, not really. But, I mean, you know, now it's creative ways in selling vinyls where you have, like, for us, we did the black vinyl, the green vinyl, the white vinyl. So it's, like, collectible items in God, color. Okay. So somebody will be like, oh, shit, they sold out of the black. I need the white. And then when we restock on the black, they want the black just to add to the set. Right. So it was just, you know, There's creative ways, ways of flipping it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, um, it's actually, it's interesting. I was looking through vinyl yesterday and seeing, like, which companies are doing <clears throat> more vinyl. Like, I noticed Universal Republic is pressing up a lot of vinyl for, like, promo seven inches for Ariana Grande and um, a, a Post has some stuff. Like, it just depends who's doing it. What I find frustrating about the vinyl is that it's popular now, but not popular enough for the cost to come down. 
But it's still hard for me to for people like us to adjust to thirty dollars for a record. Yeah, it's a lot. It's it feels lot. insane to me. Like still, I'm like, I remember when albums would come out and I'd go to the store, the double album, the double vinyls. The day they came out, they might be twelve ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and I'd be all, mad if they were sixteen ninety nine. But mad. also, they're they're selling them to most of the buyers are not actually playing the vinyl. Right, they're buying the. <laughs> the vinyl and everything it's an it's a the whole thing is a collector piece mm-hmm. right so you just want they're have never actually playing the vinyl yeah right? it's a novelty piece and it's like you know it's a lot of people overseas that's copying like i just came back from japan and everybody had a vinyl or a cd and i'm like damn like in the states we don't even care it's like a coffee shit. table book i've been in people's Legit. houses yeah, where yeah. they have like mm-hmm. Their bookshelf, and then there's their vinyl section with mm-hmm. some, you know, it's something to look at. It's a conversation piece, but they're not actually playing the vinyl. I right? will tell you, my man Brian at his apartment, he has a dope apartment in Brooklyn, and him and his girlfriend have a setup where they have a turntable and a little thing of records next to it. And like it's a store, they have a little thing that says now playing with a <laughs> shelf that you can yes. put the jacket on, which I was like, I like that. I, That's like, what fly. You, I like what you're doing over That's here. That's fly. Um, I saw you perform at Rolling Loud. How was that for you? Ah, oh, that was crazy. One of the few New York artists who didn't crazy. get pulled by the police. I know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't be in trouble. No, you know, you're I keep my life. nose clean. I'm dad life. I'm out the way. I don't want no yeah. problems. But um, I mean, until they listen to this album. <laughs> <laughs> Where the guns? Right? Until they listen to this hey, yo, album, look. Like, wait a minute. Are they going to get Arnold Schwarzenegger for what he did in the Terminator? Look, I'm not saying. So they got to leave me alone. I'm just Because all, all I'm doing the is just. The people who got yanked, some of them don't even go as hard as y'all go on this album. Look, I'm an entertainer. for real in the street like right, that. Right. I'm an entertainer. I'm with my kids. You catch me <laughs> taking my son to the bus in the morning. <laughs> I smoke my little reefer. That's legal right my now. Reefer. Just leave me alone. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, um, Rolling Loud was amazing. Um, I bought Styles P out. That was that was cool for me. Cause anytime I get a, a chance to be on a big stage, I always want to show love to the niggas that really got me going. Who was the and first rapper you them. ever saw in person in Harlem in the street, just out in the street? Rapper or musician? Either. Let's all take either. Bobby Brown. You saw Bobby Brown. Bobby Paul. Brown took my basketball and did some ill shit. Uh, no. uh, uh, and threw it back to me like, hello, nigga. And kept it pushing. <laughs> they was pushing. So they was yeah. random. They was um shooting, what was it? The Hit Me Yo video? I think it was like a new edition <laughs> remix. Some something weird. When they got signed to Bad Boy. When they got signed to Bad Boy. When they had just come back and got signed to Bad Boy. Bobby like had the brown ago. leather on. Nah, he was walking through the hood. Ago. It was like nah, 13 years ago. No, nah, it was like ago. 20. That been that long? Yeah, it was like 20. Wow. Maybe a little, maybe a little more than that. Like this is like, I want to say like ninety six. I don't remember them being signed to Bad Boy. That's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. Maybe that was, Hit Me Off was late. Maybe I'm mixing up the dates. Bad Boy was maybe later than mm-hmm. Hit Me Off. That was before the Bad Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Hit mm-hmm. Me Off. Hit Me Off was earlier. I remember yeah. Hit Me Off. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he just grabbed the ball, he took my basketball, did some ill shit, threw it back to me like, "Oh, little nigga." You never like, saw, oh. you never saw like, um, <laughs> you never saw McGruff, Mace, or, or Big L. Yeah, when you I, were a kid? I saw Mace all the time, like going in champs and like Foot Locker and shit, like on a regular. No Big L. I never seen Big L. Um, Max, of course, you know Max was running around. Killer, Jim, they was running around, but I, I never ran into Big L growing up. I wish I did. <laughs> yeah, that would have been that would have been be different. Good. Different. Um. Well, listen. I, I'll, I all I can do is give my my biggest possible Rosenberg backpack endorsement of this project. Short, seven songs, play them loud. I told the guys that when I played it, I actually stopped off at the gun store Did and you? bought a few guns. Yep. When I <laughs> rolling up on people at bus stops, such a hypocrite, and flashing, <laughs> such a hypocrite, and driving off. Oh you now nah, nah, that's my guy. Violence in America, and he'll be like, "Yo, I can't believe people with these guns." <laughs> <laughs> then this album cover is the Statue going- of Liberty with a Mac 11 or whatever the fuck that is on the cover. And the whole shit is guns, drugs, well, rap, it, guns. And I did think about that this weekend, honestly, when I was driving. One of your favorite groups of all time is named after a gun maker, Smith & Wesson. It's a great point. And I was thinking about... This, <laughs> this is a great point. <laughs> and I was thinking about... And I was thinking about this album, though. And I, I really do, because I was thinking about like how much I am anti-gun violence and how much I enjoy this album. And am I a hypocrite? And is it messed up? Particularly because... I'm like a white dude from the suburbs and enjoying hearing these black men talk about gun violence. That's is this bad? And I ended up landing on like yes, yeah. I'm a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> wow. okay, okay. But it's more Turned than it just gun violence on this shit, though. 
<laughs> Y'all yeah. ain't shit for that. <laughs> Y'all yo, ain't shit for that. Because it's more than just gun violence on this shit. No, How does is. my shit turn into gun no, violence? Not. Benny ha- Benny's a violent... Benny's God, violence I mean, game is strong. Yeah, but, but you I, know... But it's a, but like you said, though, it is a movie. Like, yeah, I don't a movie. Sit there, I, this is, they, these are, they are, let's be honest, this is not children rap. This no, is entertainment no, for adults. Here's the truth. Yeah, this the is truth is, adults. it is a part of our culture. And it's, that's the facts. And it can't be ignored. That's the facts. Because yeah. there are some cultures that aren't enamored by all of this shit. We're enamored by it because it's woven into entertainment from movies for since we were kids, into the music. And it's also real shit that goes on in the streets that we know individuals that have been involved in this world. And it's just, it's shaped our entertainment. But for the record, it is important to note that I was making the joke ironically if I stopped by the gun store. The truth is, I cannot fathom how people's taking it of entertainment would actually make them be like, you know what? I am going to go to the gun store. <laughs> like, I'm joking. Like, this is, uh, my point is that it's hard-ass music. That's it. Entertaining. Well, it's like Thank the fucking, makes you want to work out like harder. The, it's That's like it. the Tide yeah. Pod challenge on the Ex- fucking thing with idiots who are like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to fucking put this Tide, I'm going to But Tide this. can't stop, shouldn't stop selling Tide Pods. See, I, I shit is more of a TED Talk for hustlers. That's Ooh, that's how that's I boring. would explain our shit just to get the gun violence stench out the room. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't need that. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's a TED talk for hustlers. That's that's what statue. Yo, statue of limitations. Smoke Dizza, uh, Benny the Butcher. Yes. Go get the album. Grizelda. RFC Grizelda. Yes, yes. Let's go, yes. man.